party in Israel that really talks about the division between religion and the state is Maris. There are like several places in, in, in Earth that you cannot have a civil marriage. One of them is Israel, another one is Iran. Today, uh, there is an orthodox mo monopoly over religion. All the different streams of Judaism have a place and they have to be respected in the same, in the same manner. We live in a, in a society where we have to be able to respect uh, the beliefs of one another. And so this year, the, the poorest country in the OECD was Mexico, the, the population, okay? And this year, Israel took, it, took its place. In Israel, there are 800,000 children that live in poverty. In Israel, this government said that they Pulled, that it took down the, the, the average the, the number of the unemployed to five percent, which is <laughs> which is nice. It's a good number if we take into consideration what's going on in Europe. But from that, for but but the the reality is that in Israel, a third of the working people are poor. So it means that you also work, but you are poor. You live under the under the red line. Um, of poverty. We have to change the system. The state is responsible for the well-being of its citizens. If we talk about our generations and your generation, then people will get to, to pension aid without housing with a very, very low income of social security. And then what? And then, and then we will see what we see in Mexico. The elites have to be part, part of the problem, part of the solution when we say it openly they have to pay more taxes. What I can tell you for sure is that this system is not working because we have so many poor. We believe that the state has to take responsibility over the, 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 the needs of the citizens. Merits has a very, very specific plan where we talk about, um, about uh, a plan, a five-year plan where we will invest 26 uh, billion shekels uh, we say exactly where we have to invest them and where we're taking that money from. We want to change the pyramid. In Israel, there is a, is a, there is a, a pyramid where, where most of the capital, where most of the money goes to very few hands, you know, to the tycooning, to the 10 families or 20 families, you know, and in the bottom, most of the people get, uh, get uh, less of, of the wealth. And we believe that we have to change that. Meretz is the only party today that is being led by a woman, okay, Zava, Zava Galon. And if I get elected, we'll be the first party ever in the Israeli Knesset that will have a majority of women. And today, there are only 27 uh, women members of Knesset uh, of 120. Meretz is the only party that really besides the green, that has a very uh, understandable uh, green agenda to talk about urbanism, to talk about how you plan cities. Uh, we also talk about, le about legalization of uh, marijuana. Okay, we're the only party that... <laughs> Regarding security, we believe that a, an integral part of the security uh, of Israel concerns Reaching, a, uh, reaching an agreement with the Palestinians and with the Arab world. As long as we have occupation, Israel can't really be a democracy. If we don't reach an agreement, and we continue to build in the settlement, and if we annex all the occupied territories, then what will happen? Only two possibilities. Either Israel will become an apartheid state, or there will not be uh, a Jewish majority in Israel. When the right wing talks about, you know, we don't have to reach a, uh, an agreement, we are, uh, we, we have to keep all Eretz Israel for forever and ever, they have, they don't, they never give us um, a solution to what's, to, to those two things, either apartheid or a non-Jewish majority. We want to find a solution that, that will enable the state of Israel to, to continue to exist as as the Jewish state. We are always very proud to say that we are the only democracy in the Middle East, 
but we have to take care of democracy. America is not talking about a one-state solution. We're talking about two states that they have normal, normal relationships uh, between the between the states. We have borders. We have economic relations. The world is getting really tired and fed up with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And so, if we don't reach an agreement personally with the Palestinians, then the world will 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 vote will vote. And in the end, you know, in the in the Security Council of the UN. That the Americans will not veto it anymore, or the UN will create a Palestinian state. But then, the real security of interest, interests of Israel will not be put on the table. The voice, the most clear voice you have in in in, uh, in, in favor of democracy and against racism and xenophobia is uh, is merits. When you vote merits, you actually have two votes. You vote for Herzog as prime minister because we are going to recommend him. But on the other hand, you vote for all the values that Meretz represents. We also believe that it is that the Arab party is also a partner for, for, for government. Actually, we are the only ones that, that say that. But if you want Herzog to be prime minister, pragmatically, you need Meretz. Change is possible. I think that Israel can be an amazing country. It's imperative in these elections, I think, to give a chance to what you feel in your heart and to the values you represent and vote for merit. What's happening now, today, regarding the, the asylum seekers, is, I think it's, it's, um, it's one of the darkest spots in Israeli society. And, and why is that? Because we're a society of of refugees. From my grandparents, all of our grandparents were refugees, either from from Europe or from Arab countries. And so we have to know that uh, that when people are running uh, from uh, from troubled countries, we have to lend them a hand. What I believe in, and my party says, is that we have to give them uh, we have to give them a working permit in order to allow them to do work that actually that no Israelis want to do in agriculture and in uh, hotels that will spread them out in different communities. The people of South Tel Aviv will not suffer uh, the, the mass, na massive numbers of people in the same place that have no job. Why, is this, why this government does not want to give them working permits? And what you have to do as in a lot of things is, is ask the question, who is earning from, from that? And who is earning from not allowing this asylum seekers not to work? And in Israel, we have a lot of private companies that bring workers from from the Philippines, from India, from Thailand, you know, to work. And every worker that they bring, they get paid thousands of dollars for each worker. We give those work um, places to to the to the asylum seekers on. And, uh, and, and give them dignity and give peace to the people of, of South Tel Aviv. Uh, but I think that the, the, the political power, that those, those owners of those companies, they, 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 they have too much political power and that's why the laws are not passing and that's why everybody is suffering. And also the, the question of the prison, bring Israel, creating a prison in the middle of the desert Okay, where in the beginning the first bill that passed said that you can bring people, you know, ref asylum seekers for three years to incarcerate them without any charges just because of the fact that they're being here illegally, it is, it is unheard of and uh, completely anti-democratic. So I'm, I'm really, really afraid of what's happening to Israeli democracy and if we don't take care of it and, uh, then, uh, then we, will, we will really be and losing our, our, our country as, as we know it. I really like the fact that she's from another country and that she moved here. Um, it shows, first of all, the diversity in the Knesset. Um, me, as somebody who also moved to Israel, it's nice to hear that other people do it as well and why they did it and the fact that you left a country that you were comfortable in to move here. Um, I think it's also really important that there are more women in the Knesset and I think the fact that Meretz has so many women in their party is awesome. I think the fact that there are only 27 women in the Knesset currently is a really big problem and when you have a country that's run by men, I think that you're not getting 
the full picture. You're not getting everyone's uh, voice heard. One thing that really is special about Peretz is the fact that they are transparent in everything that they do. They are very clear on what they believe in, and it's the same thing that they believed in 10 years ago that they believe in today. Um, they're very clear with where they're putting their money and who they're putting their money towards, you know, and a lot of other parties won't do that. So that to me alone is a reason to vote for this party because they're an earnest party. If you're voting for them, you know where your vote's going to.